Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how to install Windows on a Macintosh computer using the Bootcamp Assistant application, which is included with OS X. For this uh, video, I'm using a 2010 Mac Mini uh, that is running OS X 10.8, that's Mountain Lion, and I'm gonna be installing Windows 7 from a disc, from a DVD. So there's basically three things that you need to make this work. You need a hard drive with some free space on it, uh, and that can be the same hard drive that you're running Mac OS X on, so I'm gonna use Macintosh HD up here. You also need a Windows installation disc and a flash drive. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna check on our flash drive and make sure that it's formatted in the correct format. So in the spotlight up here, I'm gonna type in disk utility, uh, or disk, to search up the uh, utility called disk utility. It'll open up this window here, and you'll see our flash drive on the left side here. Uh, the flash drive needs to be formatted in the MS-DOS FAT format, not in the Mac format. So I'm just going to click on MS-DOS and then give it a name and hit erase here. And now our flash drive is going to be uh, reformatted in the MS-DOS FAT format. So by formatting the flash drive in MS-DOS FAT, you're allowing it to be used by both the Windows operating system as well as the Mac operating system. So next we're gonna go up to the spotlight and start typing in the word bootcamp. And what we're gonna find is the bootcamp assistant application. Bootcamp assistant basically allows us to install uh, Windows on a partition of our Mac hard drive. Uh, and it only works for Intel based Macs. So it doesn't work for older uh, power PC based Macs. So this is going to separate my Macintosh HD hard drive into both a Mac partition and then a separate Windows partition. All right, so on the next screen, you'll see create, win uh, create a Windows 7 or later version install disk. This is only, uh, only used if you want to um, install Windows from an ISO image. An ISO image is basically just a copy of a DVD or a CD. Since I have the original Windows 7 disk, there's no reason to have this on. Uh, we're also going to attempt to download the Windows support software, which uh, installs uh, drivers for Windows that support Apple hardware, like graphics drivers, uh, my Bluetooth mouse, or Bluetooth keyboard. And then lastly, install Windows 7. So I'm going to hit continue. Now this is what will pop up if you use the ISO image option. We're not going to use that. So I'm going to uncheck that since I have the original uh, Windows 7 disk. This next screen is asking us where we want to install our, uh, our drivers, and it's just on the flash drive there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue, and it's going to begin to download the drivers for our computer, the bootcamp drivers for our computer. So again, this will allow us to use uh, Mac hardware like mice, keyboards, our graphics cards, as well as do a, a few other things that we'll talk about later when the computer's booted from Windows. Now, if you find that downloading the bootcamp support software from within the bootcamp assistant is just taking way too long, you can actually go directly to Apple's bootcamp support uh, web page and you can download the support software there. Uh, so the way to get to this web page is just go to www.apple.com forward slash support forward slash bootcamp. So from the main page, uh, just click on the downloads icon. From here, you'll see several different versions of the bootcamp support software, and depending on how old your computer is, you may have to go with an earlier version, but you'll just have to go do the research and look that up. I'm going to use 5.1.5621, which works with Windows 7, Windows 8, and 8.1, and they have to be 64-bit versions of 7, 8, and 8.1, which I have a 64-bit version of Windows 7. You'll also see at the bottom some newer 2013 models. Uh, that need a newer version of the support software. Uh, since I'm working with a Mac Mini that's from 2010, uh, this doesn't apply to me. But if you have one of these newer computers, you're going to want to get a newer version of Bootcamp support software. So I'll go ahead and click download, and on my Wi-Fi connection, it's going to take about 10 minutes to download this. And in my experience, that's a heck of a lot quicker than it would take to do it from within the Bootcamp Assistant. 
All right, so the support software is just about done downloading. We just have a few more seconds here. And after this downloads, I'm going to, well, first I'm going to close out Safari. So I'll just go to Safari Quit or whatever web browser you're using. Go to your Macintosh hard drive, go to Downloads, and you will find the uh, bootcamp zip file there. Uh, so to unzip it, just double click on it, and it'll extract a folder out of that zip file. So if you open that folder, you'll see that there's just some installation files in there. And all I'm going to do is drag and drop this folder onto my USB flash drive. Now the reason why we're using the flash drive to put these installation files on is these are Windows installation files. Um, so they can only be, we can only access and run the installer when we're on the Windows partition of our hard drive, which we haven't even made yet. So because we formatted this flash drive in MS-DOS FAT format, when we restart the computer in Windows mode on the Windows partition, Windows will recognize this flash drive. We can open up this installer and install the bootcamp uh, support software. All right, the files have been copied to the flash drive. Let's just go find bootcamp assistant again by using the spotlight. There's bootcamp assistant. We'll hit continue. We'll uncheck the two top options because we don't need them anymore. And then all that's left is to install Windows. Now on this screen, it's going to ask us what hard drive do we want to install our Windows partition on. I actually have two hard drives on this computer. I have one that's called Media HD, one that's called Macintosh HD. My Media HD is just like an internal uh, storage device. I just drop files on it. So I don't want to use that for an, a new operating system. And you'll notice that um, you can actually use this to create a second a single uh, partition for Windows on a separate hard drive. So you can if you want, you can have two separate hard drives uh, running two different operating systems. So instead of using two different hard drives for Mac and Windows, I'm just going to create a second partition for Windows on my existing Mac hard drive. Now in this window, um, this is showing you how much space you want to allot for Mac OS X, and then also how much space you want to allot for Windows. So we're basically just deciding how much space we want to allot for our Windows partition. By default, Bootcamp will not let you make this partition smaller than 20 gigabytes. But in all actuality, you need about 34 gigabytes minimum for uh, Windows to install and run properly. At least that's what the Windows installer recommends. I'm actually going to give it a little bit more space. I'm going to give it 70 gigabytes so I can have some extra space for extra files and apps and things like that. So once you've done that, you can click install. And if you get this window that says Bootcamp needs to update the flash drive before installing Windows 7, this is perfectly normal. Uh, it just basically says there's a bootable volume there. It needs to be updated before we continue. Don't worry, it won't delete our support software that we moved on there. So just click continue and then click install. And it'll start partitioning our disk into separate Mac and Windows partitions. The entire process of partitioning your disk should only take a few minutes, but it depends on the size of your drive. It also depends on whether you're using a solid state drive like I'm using here, or just a standard uh, hard drive. Now once this partitions the disk, it's going to automatically restart the computer as you can see it's doing here. After restarting, your Mac will now boot from the Windows partition on the disk that we just created. And you'll go through a few uh, Windows kind of startup screens here. While this is loading, I just want to say a couple things. First, um, make sure to back up your files from your Mac partition. Uh, a couple times when doing this, I've had my hard drive, not corrupted, but uh, the files have been messed up and it didn't boot properly, and I just had to go back and reformat the hard drive with my backup. Uh, and then second, if you're trying to do this without a CD DVD drive, um, you can still do it as long as you have an Apple external super drive. So here's our Windows 7 uh, uh, series of loading screens here. I'm just going to click install now. And it will start to set up Windows for us. But yeah, going back to what I said before, if you don't have an Apple external super drive, you will have to create an ISO image out of your disk in order to install Windows. So here's just the license terms. I'll say I accept the terms. I'm doing a fresh install of Windows, so I'm going to click custom. It's not an upgrade. And on this screen, you'll see all of our partitions of all of our connected disks, hard drives, solid state drives, whatever. Um, so you'll see that some of these say like unallocated space, others are used partitions. 
the one that we want to make sure that we select is the one that's labeled boot camp. And the boot camp assistant labeled that partition boot camp for us so we d couldn't miss it. What you might see at the bottom of the screen is that this partition cannot be installed uh, with Windows on it. So what we have to do is click on drive options, uh, make sure that that drive is selected, click format, and then click OK. And what this will do is it will format that drive in NTFS format so that Windows can be installed on it. NTFS stands for New Technology File System, and it's the standard drive format for uh, computers or for hard drives running the Windows operating system, much like uh, the Mac operating system defaults to Mac journaled. So when we get to this uh, installation window here, uh, the computer is going to restart several times, usually about three times. So I'm just going to cut out all of the restarts. And eventually you'll get to, uh, it's usually the third restart and you'll get this starting Windows um, logo. So here it says it's preparing the computer for first use. It's uh, now checking the video performance. And eventually we'll get to our setup screen. And here we go. So here we can create a username. I'm just going to type in my last name, Carney, and then click Next. Um, you can just create a password, a login password. You don't have to, but I'm going to. And then I'll just type in a password hint. And then click Next. And at this point, you have to type in your Windows uh, product key. This is usually on the back of the, of the, the DVD case. So I'm going to go ahead and just censor this out so you can't see what my product key is uh, for obvious reasons. And then once you type in your product key, you can just hit Next. And it will verify that your product key is valid. After it validates your product key, it's going to ask you if you want to install uh, recommended updates. I'm just going to say install important updates just to kind of expedite this process. From here, you'll set your time zone. I'm in Florida, so I'm going to choose Eastern Time. And it doesn't always get the time right. Uh, it's definitely not 8.15 p.m. It's actually uh, 3.15 p.m. And then I'll hit Next and it will finalize our settings. Now, it won't take this long every single time to, to restart and open up Windows. This is just kind of the first setup it takes this long uh, to do this. Uh, every other time, it'll be much, much quicker. And eventually, we should get our Windows 7 desktop, and there we go. One of the first things I'm gonna do is change the screen resolution. So you can just right click anywhere on the desktop, go to screen resolution, and then you'll see that it's just giving me some like a generic um, driver for my video. Uh, that's because we haven't installed the uh, the support software yet. I'm going to bump up the resolution to the highest value so I can see a little bit more. And I'll click Keep Changes to keep that screen resolution. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that a Bluetooth mouse and Bluetooth keyboard won't be initially recognized by Windows. So we need to go install our uh, support software by clicking or right clicking on start going to open Windows Explorer click on the computer on the left and then you should see the USB flash drive that we had connected that we loaded the support software onto so double click on the drive double click on the bootcamp 5.1 folder double click on bootcamp and eventually you'll see this setup file and this will allow us to set up those uh, support files so it says, welcome to the bootcamp installer, hit next, agree to the terms, and then click install. So we'll have to wait a few minutes while it installs the bootcamp support software. Throughout this whole process, I've been using a USB keyboard and a USB mouse because when you uh, boot up Windows for the first time, like I said, it's not going to recognize uh, any Bluetooth devices. So if you only have a Bluetooth mouse and a Bluetooth keyboard, you're not going to be able to do this. You're going to have to have a just kind of like a backup USB uh, mouse and keyboard to do this. All right, the boot camp installer is all done. It took uh, quite a while for all that to, uh, to load, so just be patient with it. Um, so after uh, it's finished, you just click finish on the bottom, and it's going to prompt us to restart the computer, which we have to, so click yes. And after the restart, you'll see the login screen that has the same username and password that you typed in earlier. So just type in your user password and then click on the little arrow to boot up Windows. 
So when you boot Windows for the first time after installing the uh, support software, you'll get this boot camp help index. I'm not gonna use it, but it's there in case you need uh, extra help getting Windows running. So I'm just gonna close out boot camp help, go down to the taskbar down here, and show these hidden icons. Now, after installing the support software, there's a boot camp icon, there is the uh, safely remove hardware that was actually there before, and then now there's a new Bluetooth devices icon. I'm gonna drag all three of these down to the taskbar so I can more easily access them. All right, with the Bluetooth devices icon, you can set up a Bluetooth device. You can receive and send files, so that's kind of cool. So this is where you'd add a Bluetooth mouse or keyboard. Next, I'm gonna right click and change my screen resolution back to what it was before the restart. And you'll notice that sometimes the support software makes your Mac get the full screen resolution it should out of uh, Windows. In my case, it's only going up to 1280, which is not as large as this monitor can go to. So you may find that you have to go and uh, download additional drivers to fully update Windows in order to uh, adapt to your Mac monitor or to maybe a third party monitor. Next, I'm gonna open up Windows Explorer and I'm gonna click on computer on the left side, the same place we went to to find our flash drive earlier. And you'll see that all of our connected drives are shown here. So we've got our Macintosh hard drive, my media drive that I talked about earlier where I just keep uh, photos, documents, audio, things like that on here. Um, you can actually access these files from the Windows partition. It all just depends on uh, what format you have that drive in. Next, I'm gonna click on computer again, find my C drive, which is where uh, the Windows OS is installed. And I just wanna change the name from Boot Camp to Windows HD. So you just right click, click rename, type in whatever name you want the drive to be labeled as, and then hit enter. And it'll ask for uh, administrator permission. So we'll just click continue. We also don't need our Windows installation DVD anymore. So I'll right click and choose eject and that will eject the disk from the uh, from my disk drive. And then we don't need the USB drive anymore either. So I'll right click on that and click eject. And then it'll say you can safely remove this hardware now so you can pull it out without damaging it. All right, so we've got Windows 7 running on our Mac. What if we want to restart the computer and then reboot the computer in Mac OS X instead of in Windows? So how do we get back to our Mac partition on the drive? Well, after you install the support software, there's this extra icon down here in the uh, taskbar that lets you restart the computer in Mac OS X instead of in Windows. So all you do is you click on that and then you choose restart in OS X and it will prompt you to, are you sure you want to uh, restart the computer? Uh, your computer will start up using OS X. Yes, we do want to do that. So you just click OK and it restarts the computer. And after the restart, you'll be taken back to your normal uh, Mac OS X login screen, type in your password, hit enter, and it loads up um, Mac OS X. Now, one thing that you'll see here now that's changed is since we created a new partition of the drive, we've got our Macintosh drive, our media drive, but there's also our Windows hard drive down here. And whatever name you gave this back when we were on the Windows partition will show up here. Next, I'm gonna to go to System Preferences, and I'm gonna find a system preference called Startup Disk. Startup Disk lets us reboot the computer and go back to Windows uh, from OS X. So I'm gonna click, click on Startup Disk, and then you'll see Macintosh HD and Windows HD. So it loads all of the drives that have operating systems loaded onto them. So all you have to do to restart in Windows is click on the Windows icon and then click restart and it'll restart the computer in Windows. Another way to boot up a particular partition is to restart the computer and hold option on your keyboard. This will pull up this screen where you can choose between your Macintosh partition and your Windows partition. So if I wanna load up OS X, I click on Macintosh HD and then click on the up arrow to load that partition. It'll load whatever OS is loaded onto that partition. So while OS X is loading up here, let's talk about how we can remove Windows 7 from our hard drive. We can't simply just go and reformat our Windows HD uh, partition because it's an NTFS format. And using disk utility, Macs can't reformat NTFS drives. 
So what we have to do is go back to our boot camp assistant. Again, click on your spotlight and type in boot camp. Open up the boot camp assistant, just like we did toward the beginning of the video, and then click continue. And you'll see that the bottom option also includes remove Windows 7. So I'm gonna just check just that one box and then click continue. So from here, you can click on your Mac and, well now Mac and Windows hard drive and choose restore disk to a single OS X partition. So what this does is it wipes all of the data from the Windows partition and restores the Macintosh partition to be able to utilize the full capacity of the drive. So after a few minutes of waiting, you'll see that the partition, the Windows partition has been removed from the drive and it says the Windows partition has been removed and your disk restored to a single volume. So after that, we could just hit quit to close out the Boot Camp Assistant, and you'll see that the Windows HD partition is no longer being shown on the desktop. So that concludes the video on how to install Windows 7 on a Mac with Boot Camp Assistant.